Hey everyone, this is F2BNP here with a uh, sort of impromptu video, sort of uh, not so impromptu. It's a somewhat rainy, definitely moody evening, and I'm sitting at home and I figured might as well uh, just showcase every retro, sort of retro, and not so retro system that I own. Minus a couple of systems like, you know, my very own PC and stuff. Because I don't think that'd be of very much interest. Um, and I say sort of impromptu. I've been thinking about doing this for a while. Had this video back in June for GPU June. With a 486 and a 386 sort of systems. Which I'll be showcasing a little bit more here. Um, so I figured, you know, I, I like that... You know, I shared these and uh, I got some comments. I think this hobby is all about uh, just, you know, sharing and uh, showing other people stuff. Like on Vogons, I see some crazy systems there. Um, so I figured, all right, whatever, let's just do it. Uh, I think it's gonna be fun. I am gonna be opening up each and every one of them. They're not that great. Some of them are fucking awesome, I love them. Others not so much, so... Yeah, I have this spare room here in the house, it's my old room. Um, and I basically use it for storage, it's... It's kind of fucked, it's not great. Um, but, yeah, whatever, we'll be taking a look. So, I got these over here, uh, right below this desk. Um, I got this great monitor here, and I got a ton more. Yeah, never mind the baby carriage over there. Um, so, yeah, let me just pull them up one by one, and uh, we'll talk. So, this one was a very recent acquisition. Um, like I said, this is a, a room with... Basically, it's used for storage. So, never mind it. Also, show, sorry for the shaky cam. Um... I will be moving around a little bit, but I'll try to set up the camera properly. Never mind the PlayStation 2 over there in the back and this Casa Cooler. Get this out of the way. Alright, so this has been the most recent, recent acquisition. Uh, let's set it up here. Alright, stable cam. Great. So, my brother called me one day and told me. Hey, you know, I got, I got this family friend, and her mother has this old system. Do you want it? I'm like, sure. Why not? Like, let's see what it, what they got. And it was this little thing. It's an Olivetti uh, Pentium 166 MMX system. Um, so this is the most recent one. I got this uh, around June this year or something. Um... All right, let's open it up. So I open it up. Let me just say I love desktop systems. Um, so this is based on the Via VPX, I believe. And it's on its way out. I'll say more about this. Uh, I upgraded the CPU from uh, 166 to 233. Uh, MMX, that is. I tried a K62 in there, but the BIOS would just hang. It wouldn't post properly. Uh, you can't really see it. Let's see if I can... Yeah, that chip over there in the back is actually an S3 Trio 64. Uh, you might be able to catch a glimpse of it right here. And I upgraded the RAM from 2 megs to 4, just for, you know, just for giggles. Uh, RAM is 64 megs, um, but I wanted some 3D acceleration. This system has three PCI slots and three ISO? Yeah, three ISA slots. You can use uh, four, is it five? Five of them at the same time. So you, can, you have to choose between three um, ISA and two PCI or three PCI slots and two ISA. So um, I got a Voodoo Banshee in there. Uh, I figured Voodoo One is not fast enough for my needs. Um, and Voodoo 2 is just wasted here and I don't have a ton of them. So 
I have a couple of Voodoo Banshees, so I thought, all right, might as well. Yeah, it's a nice, I think, it's a nice fit. Um, I have a Network card. I can't remember, it's probably a 10, 100, 3-com, an IC. And we got a Sound Blaster Vibra 16C. Yeah, just crap, whatever. But, you know, I like desktop systems. I like owning a Pentium MMX desktop system. Um, and it's on its way out. Oh, I've got a four gigabyte hard drive in there uh, that you can't see. It's down at the bottom. Yeah, it's not even focusing right. Anyway, um, it's on its way out, this system. I found a 430TX system for a very decent price, I might say. And it's coming in. And that will hopefully run at the K6 II as well um, for fun. But I just wanna, I'm gonna actually compare. I'm gonna do some uh, late, you know, last minute benchmarks on this and just see how, how does it compare to the 430TX. All right, moving on. All right, and we're back with something that's completely not retro. Um, it's this mini ITX system that's actually relatively recent. So I wanted to, to say, to tell a story with each one of these, just a short story. Um, so this is a PC minus the case that I had at um, another house that we have in the countryside, you know, just your home media center sort of PC. Um, I had it hooked up to a TV at the same time to watch movies or um, and I also had a dedicated monitor for it um, to, you know, just read the news or whatever. Do pretty light stuff. So it's an AM1 system. Remember that? That was a fun little system. It draws very little power. Uh, it's a four-core Athlon 5350, I believe. Um, yeah, pretty interesting. Uh, very, very low power consumption. About as fast as a Core 2 Quad Q6600, I think. Four gigs or maybe eight gigs of RAM or something in there. Um, so I picked this up. I replaced that PC with uh, a Dell SFF with a second or third generation i5. So yeah, that was more handy. And um, I didn't have this case when I brought it over. This case I bought from some guy locally for very cheap. It's some NZXT case that he's done some mods, like he cut this here. Man, that's dusty. Um, and I thought, all right, this is a mini ITX board. Might as well just get you know, a mini ITX case. And, you know, I, I met up with a guy, it was like last year or something, and uh, he asked me, oh man, you know, I've done these mods, he told me, to, to put, put some big uh, graphics cards in there and stuff. He was very excited. And he just told me, you know, I just had to move to something else, something uh, faster. And I was like, all right, that sounds cool. Um, you know, uh, but I told him immediately, like, you know what, I'm gonna be using this for a AM1 system. And he was like, Oh, he was visibly, he was visibly annoyed by this. I, I kid you not. Like, I, I found this very funny. But yeah, AM1, AM1, sorry for that. AM1 uh, CPU. Got an Arctic cooler in there. Uh, the idea was, I got that case, I put the system in there, and the idea was that I'd have it running as my media server. That never happened. Uh, it's been waiting for me there to set it up, but it just, it, it never happened. It, yeah. I should. I should do it at some point. Um, but anyway, moving on. Alright, cue up the 2001 monolith music. Alright. Enough of that. So this is a cooler master case, wave master case. Um, 
Let's turn it to the side. I'm taking the liberty of opening up the side. Hopefully, if I can push it in the back, you can see more of it. So, man, yeah, it's a big case for the time. I fell in love with this case the first time I ever saw it. So, this case and the power supply up there, you can't see it. It's a Silverstone ST75F, 750 watt uh, modular, modular, power, bleh, modular power supply from 2006 or so. Um, I fell in love with this case when I first saw it in, I want to say 2007. So a friend of ours, family friend, who is um, essentially a graphic designer, he bought this uh, system with a P5e, Q6600, 8800 GTS 512. This case, you know, four gigs of RAM in 2007. It was a kick-ass system, and he used it for. I don't know, uh, very light stuff. So I was always like very envious and always seeing it. I was like, I want this, I want this. So eventually, uh, some years ago, he, he upgraded that PC. Well, he moved to another PC and I got some of the stuff. Uh, all right, so let's talk specs. This is one of my favorite systems. It took me years to build it. Uh, we got an Asus P5Q3, that's P45 based motherboard with DDR3 memory, uh, of which I have four gigs uh, of, uh, well, four sticks of one gigabyte each, uh, DDR3 cell shock, shell sock, blah, shell shock memory. There we go. Got it right the third time. Um, I don't know if anyone remembers shell shock. Um, they had like crazy timings at the time. Uh, core 2 quad that I've got in there. I've got a core 2 quad Q9550. It does not really benefit from DDR3, but it's cool. And I wasn't going to use these memories, this, these sticks for for anything else. Um, what is this cooler? I don't know. Oh, I know. It's an Enermax cooler that I got. Uh, gosh, I can't remember. It's like a VT60 something and a GeForce GTX 285 uh, Sandblaster Oddigy 2 ZS. Now you can't see it from here, but there is another PCI Express slot in there. And the idea was that I would install another GTX 85. I have one in fact, but I don't have the SLI bridges. They're very short. Mine are very short. Um, and it's also like impossible in this case. I need a bigger case for that. I, I might do it sometime in the future. I've never really used SLI or Crossfire. So yeah, I'm looking into uh, doing it at some point in the future. Uh, other things that you can't really see. Well, barely. This is a 500 gig uh, Orson Digital hard drive, I believe. And I got a 256 gigabyte SSD. This system dual boots Windows 7 and Windows XP. I love the GTX 285 because it's the last non DirectX 11 card from Nvidia. It it just I don't know. I like this card. It's pretty decent. Um, that's about it for this system. I'd say uh, Core 2 duos and Core 2 quads are very close to my heart very near and dear. Core 2 Duo was like my big jump from Pentium 4 and it just was such a such a massive leap I will say. All right I think that's about it let's move on to the next system. All right so it's not just the previous case that doesn't fit in the frame this one doesn't either. Um, this is as far back as I can go, unfortunately. Uh, so this is just a generic Asus Vento case, but the system inside is also pretty special. And I forgot to remove the thumb screws, so please bear with me. All 
All right, let's see if it fits in the frame. Come on, focus. You can do it. Maybe if I move it back here, it will. All right. So this is a socket 754 uh, system. So I've always wanted one and I have it. Uh, motherboard is an MSI K8N Neo. It's based on the Enforce 3. I got a gig of RAM in there. Uh, nothing fancy with these sticks. It's just Kingston memory, I believe. DDR400. Power supply is a Tegan. You can sort of see the logo or Tagan, I don't know what it's called. Um, 480 uh, watts. Uh, it's got a massive uh, reading on the five volt um, uh, rail, 48 amps, which is useless for this system, but whatever. Uh, CPU is an Athlon 64, 3400 plus. Unfortunately, only with 512 kilobytes of cache. That's a little bit unfortunate. I can't remember if this model ever came out with one meg. But anyway, it's one of the fastest processors for this socket, so I don't really fuss about it. And GPU is uh, the venerable 6800 GT. Uh, this is actually a very, very recent purchase, the 6800 GT. I had a vanilla 6800 in there. Uh, with 128 megs of RAM and I was hoping that it would unlock but it didn't um, it didn't clock that well either it was just you know uh, all right traffic noise from from the road below all right uh, so it didn't unlock I found this though and it's just great I love this card it really fits the system, you know, 2004, early-ish, 2005, you know, absolutely kick-ass. Uh, it's great stuff. Uh, I've got a hard drive in there. I can't remember what kind of, maybe a 500 gigabyte hard drive. Windows XP, obviously. Um, what else did I want to say about this? Oh, six eight hundreds. I've always had a love sort of relationship with these cars. I I love them for some reason. Uh, maybe because it's around the time when I was, you know, a teenager and I was really into, um, you know, computers. I was really getting into PC building and 6800 GTs were like the top. Uh, my brother had a 6600 GT and that was a pretty fast card, like arguably one of the greatest value for money cards ever released. Um, and that 6800 GT was always like the holy grail. And I, I wanna say around 10 years ago, uh, maybe slightly more, I was looking for one uh, to put in a Pentium 4 system. And I found this guy locally who was selling a 6800 LE. And I remembered from like my, my uh, teenager days where I was like, hmm, you know, those LEs could unlock, couldn't they? So I asked him, like, hey, I know this is a long shot. Like, you probably don't even know, but can this card be unlocked? And the guy was ecstatic. He was like, holy shit, dude. You know, you reminded me of... You reminded me of uh, being, like, a, a uni student and buying this card with my friend at the time. And we were like... Uh, Man, let's unlock these. And he was like, you know, I'm adamant that I unlocked it back then. And just in case someone doesn't know, unlocking means uh, basically 6800 GT had 16 pixel pipelines and uh, I don't know, six vertex pipelines or something. Uh, to make the vanilla, they basically um, either got defective chips that couldn't unlock or they just got chips that would have been fine for 6800 GT and uh, they um, locked them to 12 pixel pipelines and the LE was further locked to eight pixel pipelines and four vertex uh, units or pipelines, whatever. Um, so I met up with him eventually. He lived pretty close by, I think. And 
and you know I remember this story with so many details he was uh he he was like ecstatic about it he was he was having so much fun just talking about these things uh, I had a great time talking with this guy it was fun and he told me like how he bought it and stuff and I still remember it but you know uh, I don't want to reminisce too much otherwise this video is gonna be like five hours or something I got many systems to get through but I still remember that 6800 LE unfortunately it died on me a few years ago um, it was a great clocker like it unlocked fully I could overclock it quite a bit as well uh, these cards are bandwidth starved once you get them like unlocked they're just completely bandwidth starved unfortunately uh, because they only have DDR1 memory, whereas the GT and Ultra had GDDR3. And they also only have like half the VRAM, it's only 128 megs. So yeah, finally getting a real true 6800 GT, this is an MSI model. Oh, and I haven't shown you one of the best features. I didn't notice this initially, but it has a potentiometer here that you can actually control the fan speed with. So I gave the card a good cleaning and um, I've put it on minimum because it's pretty noisy otherwise and I checked the temps, it's fine, it's just gonna do fine, it doesn't exceed 70 degrees Celsius, so we're doing just fine. Uh, I didn't say anything about the previous two systems that were retro based, you know the MMX one is great for you know just seeing what kind of uh, performance you could get out of a pretty decent uh, system for 97, 98 um, and also showcases just how badly uh, games were like getting optimized for Pentium 2's. Uh, previous system Core 2 Quad I use it for games from like 2008, 2009 maybe, 2007 that kind of range. Uh, maybe even slightly older with AA cranked up all the way up or maybe newer games as well but uh, with just to see you know how they run not really actually sit down and play them I mean when you have the option like why bother um, and I just made the entire hobby hobby uh, with this comment I just made it completely unnecessary anyway and this is them right in front of you just for me it represents top of the line 2004 essentially. Um, obviously you can put in an ATI card in there, X, uh, X800 or X850, and that's fine. Like, yeah, I agree. It's, uh, it's a faster card, but it lacks Shader Model 3, and I, I just hold the 6800 GT so close to my heart. I love that card. Anyway, moving on. Alright, and we're out of focus. Alright, somewhat into focus. Uh, I took a small break and uh, it's getting darker uh, so I had to turn off turn on the lights anyway uh, so this is a case from Cougar it's uh, pretty low-end stuff that's yeah, plasticky but it gave me an idea a friend of mine gave it to me for free I didn't want it anymore so I figured, all right, let's see what we can what we can install here. All right, it's into frame. So since I showed you some socket 754 earlier, uh, this is socket 939. Appropriately so, uh, we got an MSI uh, MS 6702E. Oh yeah, it's the K8T Neo 2. Um, so via KT 880 based. Um, I could be wrong here. Uh, power supply cannot focus. So thermal take TR2 550. Uh, nothing too fancy, but I'd say period correct. Uh, and we got an Athlon 64X2 4200 plus and a Radeon 3850 so hard drive and stuff and uh, I believe 2 gigs of RAM uh, yeah 
actually let's take a look at this cooler is a scythe shuriken i believe come on yeah it's uh super talent memory uh focus you can do it whatever ddr 400 Cassa latency uh, 2.5. Very nice, I think. Alright, that's it. There we go. If I could see, it'd be better. Uh, so, I am not very happy with this. <laughs> Processor is decent. I mean, it is an Athlon X2, Athlon 64 X2, and I've always been kind of fascinated by that. I've never used one before. Or rather, I'd never used one before. Uh, I am getting, actually, I, I went to a friend uh, the other day and I asked him, hey, do you have a faster one maybe? And he looked around and he said, you know what, I'm, I'm sure I have an Opteron uh, 1.8. Five, I believe, which is a 2.6 gigahertz uh, processor. This is 2.2, and it's got two megs of level two cache. That's one megabyte for each core. Uh, whereas this only has one meg. Um, so definitely getting that if he finds it. That'd be awesome. And now that I've said it on camera, it's not gonna happen, I guess, because of luck. If you believe something very hard, it's just not gonna happen. Uh, yeah, just kidding. Uh, but this is not a system I'm very happy with, like I said. Uh, the VIA board, VIA base board is probably decent, but uh, I want an Enforce 4. So I went ahead and actually picked up a board couple months ago but I haven't got around to installing it uh, because I also got another GPU you see that Enforce 4 car uh, motherboard is PCI Express now initially the idea was that you know I'd have this system uh, with a very fast processor and I'd install you know I'd keep it AGP as this is um, in, in the hopes that, you know, I'll have this system where I can totally benchmark every AGP card without any CPU bottlenecks. And that's not entirely wrong, I would say, but I did pick up this uh, 3850 AGP for pretty cheap. Let's see if I can show it just a little bit. It's from Powercaller. Um, yeah, I gotta say I'm not happy with this card at all. Uh, so I got some rubber bands up here. Let's see if I can show it to you. Yeah, so I put this... So that over there is actually the AGP bridge chip from PCI Express to AGP. Now, NVIDIA had those as well on cards beginning from the 6600 GT, I believe. And that one was passively cooled. On ATI cards, it's just, you know, the dye is left exposed and it gets ridiculously hot. And that chip can cause issues. It's, it's just not a great design. Uh, not the chip itself, but the, the GPUs and the compatibility. The drivers are a pain. I'm not a huge fan. Uh, yeah, I'm just messing around with this. I'm not a huge fan. And I just wasn't very comfortable with that, so I did put a little dinky cooler in there and some uh, thermal paste, and I used this rubber band trick to tie it around a couple of screws and keep it in place. So, instead of this, I went ahead and bought an X1900 XT, which is uh, essentially an X1950 XT, but with GDDR3, and perhaps slightly lower clocks, which I am gonna get back um, by overclocking. 
Um, this is in the post, I am waiting for it. And tied with that Enforce 4 board and that Opteron, I'm gonna have some really kick-ass systems. Now, I, I picked this X1950, X1900 uh, GPU because it's the last uh, and probably fastest DirectX 9 only video card. Now, it's the last from ATI. Starting with the 2000 series, they went to DirectX 10. And it's a great card. It's very, very fast. Drivers can make it very compatible with older games. And it's got this nice 16-bit uh, dithering. So, uh, I've been meaning to get one and play with it. And, oh, yeah. Since that cooler is kind of noisy, as far as I know, that's what they tell me. I got this cooler for 10 euros, brand new. Yeah, this was sitting in a warehouse somewhere. And I got it. So, this to me represents, what does this system represent? It represents the beginning of affordable dual core setups. You know, it's that era where people were like, oh, should I buy this dual core, you know, 3800? plus or maybe the 4200 plus or should I get uh, you know the the single core 3800 plus or something because of the higher frequency and stuff and for the most part you know gamers wanted the single core of course that all changed next year with the introduction of the core 2 duo where it was just universally just the fastest thing out there and also the most efficient and everything. It was fantastic uh, CPU. Um, there's the Pentium D. I don't have any sympathy for that. No sympathy for the devil. Uh, but Athlon 64, I don't know. I always kind of envied people with Athlon 64 at the time. I had a Pentium 4. So yeah. Uh, we're going to be talking about these in just a second. I'll be back. Alright, I know we're all over the place, but uh, I just bring them out as I have them available. So, I've, I've shown you this before. It's a 486 system, short of. Um, let's open it up. Jump cut! Alright, here it is. Let's see if I can... Damn, that cut me a little bit. Alright, so, this is a 486 system, sort of, and I just realized you can't really see much. Let's get at this lamp here. Hmm, seems to be focusing on the lamp. Instead of my hand! slightly better. Yeah, let's just move it out of frame. Alright, so this is a UMC based board. It's the... Uh, I can't remember its name. It's pretty popular. Oh, there it is actually. MB8433 UUD um, dash A version 2. That's right over there. Now I'm and I've got a Cyrix 5x86 uh, processor in there, clocked at 120 megahertz. Uh, I've also applied a lot of um, of those uh, enhancements and tweaks. Damn, motorbikes are pretty loud today. All right, back to this um, 256k of cache. 32 megs of FPM memory. EDO is problematic on this board. And I got an S3 Verge in uh, PCI. S3 Verge with two megs of RAM, I believe. Some Ethernet card in there. Uh, this had a Dallas chip that I've replaced with, uh, you know, I did the mod and put a battery holder in there. That is a SCSI board that I found. Um, 
was for some printer, I think, but I use it for fun, obviously. Um, SCSI is always fun, let's just say. Um, I have a zip drive in SCSI. Um, and that's great. I, I can just use that for fun sometimes. Um, and I got a Sam Blaster 16 down here with an NEC XR385. Yeah, remember those when they were uh, a dime a dozen on a dime a dozen in, in, on eBay? Yeah, they're pretty expensive nowadays, but I got this for like 15 euros back in the day or whatever it was. Uh, yeah, some spaghetti in there. I don't have a hard drive here. I, I have a Comeback Flash card. Let's see. Yeah. Get that lamp out of the way. Come on, focus. So it's a SanDisk, 16 gigabytes. Yeah, whatever. Let's put it back in. It works pretty well, actually. Some people put those cards in for quick portability and uh, transfers, but I have. I have uh, Ethernet for that, so I don't really need it. So this system runs Windows 95, and it's a lot of fun to to play with this. Um, as seen previously, it's also got a five and a quarter inch uh, floppy, so that's fun. I like this system. It's pretty odd. It's pretty Cyrix, pretty odd. Oh, and a megahertz counter. Oh yes. All right, next system. You know, I realized that five and a quarter inch might have actually been more at home here. So I've showed this system again in GPU June along with the quote unquote 486 system. Uh, this is a 386 system, let's say. Yeah, it's not entirely 386, not entirely 486. And I'm going to need to use that lamp again because it has gotten pretty dark. So. What the hell is this? You can't see shit because of that cable, I realize. Uh, do I have a motherboard identifier anywhere? Nope. I don't think so. So it's a 3D6 motherboard. That's pretty easy to tell. Only 8-bit and 16-bit ISO slots. Um, behind that cooler is a Cyrix CX uh, 486. DLC running at 40 megahertz. Right below that is a Cyrix FastMath. Come on, focus. Jesus. Eh, slightly bit better. Cyrix FastMath uh, FPU at 33 megahertz. It runs at 40 just fine. And I got, I believe, 16 megs of RAM in here. It used to have only four. Or eight, I think it was eight. But then I, I bought Tito's um, Tito is uh, is actually uh, manufacturing and selling brand new RAM over at Amibay, so that's pretty cool. Uh, so I bought that. What else we got? Oh, two fifty six k of cash. Um, I got uh, shit. All right, that card there is uh, obviously I/O. No, I mean uh, hard drive controller and floppy controller. I think I got a one gig hard drive in here with Windows 3.1, uh, rather 3.11 and DOS. Cyrus Logic card. This is the GD. 5422, pretty standard for this system. I could have gone Trident, but why hamper it? If I'm gonna max performance with with Cyrix here, why hamper it with a Trident card? I got an Opti card in there, I don't know, like 829, I think, or whatever they, these are called 929. Yeah, 929A, and I got a 3Com Etherlink 3, ISA card. So, let me just put it back stable, otherwise you're gonna vomit or something. 
I love this system. It started with an Intel DX33 that I clocked at 40 megahertz. And um, after that, you know, I was like, all right, let's chase more speed. And I did just that. I, I went ahead, um, I bought the Cyrix processor. I had no end of issues. Uh, it was just crazy. And the issue was the cache. It, it ran just fine at 40 megahertz um, with the Intel, you know, 386. But with the Cyrix, it just wouldn't work properly, uh, no matter the timing. So I got some, uh, uh, I can't remember the nanosecond reading on those, but I got some faster cache chips, and there we go. So it's a lot of fun. It's the only system I have with 3.11, so that makes it a little bit unique. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Now this is a classier system. I didn't want to remove the front panel just yet. I have to, to uh, expose it. But I mean, this does, if this beige, slightly, or rather quite a bit yellowed beige color doesn't, you know, uh, look 1990, late 90s to you. I don't know what will. All right, let's open it up real fast. So I decided to put something appropriate here. And yeah. So this is a 440BX based motherboard by Soyo. I believe it's the 6BA plus 4, and yeah it is, which is identical to the 6BA plus 3, but it includes uh, an ATA66 controller. So that's nice. Uh, I have a compact power supply from a very old desktop system from theirs. Uh, Pentium 3 500. One of my favorite processors of all time. 256 megs of uh, PC 133 RAM, which I believe I ran at uh, CL2. A Voodoo 3 with a fan. Uh, network car in there, and damn, I just realized I can't show you the entirety of it. I got an ESS, um, I think it's a solo one. No, it's an audio drive. It's an ES1868F. So I had to have a classic 440BX system and Voodoo 3 in there. Like, this is a nice go to system for 98, 99. Um, what else can I say? 440BX, I love 440BX, great stuff. Um, stability for the most. Part, and uh, this is a great board. This is one of the best boards you can get because uh, with this ATX66 motherboard, you can you can really get some extra oomph uh, out of your hard drive. Uh, funny story. So I got this board, not this particular one, but this board I got a few years ago from some guy, pretty cheap locally. And uh, I realized, I tried to update the BIOS and uh, it died on me. Like the BIOS chip died. So I was in talks with Kiropi, uh, co-creator of the fantastic Orpheus sound card, among other things, check him out. Um, and he lives in the same country as me, but we don't live close by. He lives uh, hundreds of kilometers away and we've known each other for a few years and sometimes I send him stuff to, to help me out with. He's great. Uh, thank you if you're watching this, seriously, man. I owe you some beers. Um, so we had this back and forth with this board, like uh, it needed a special BIOS chip, not just anything because I, I don't remember the details, but essentially it has two banks, one for the BIOS, like your normal BIOS and another for the BIOS for the high point 
8K66 controller, which you can see right here. And that part of it was bricked on the original one. I found a chip from the US. Uh, I paid a lot of it in shipping and something. It's just ridiculous stuff, but was it worth it in the end? Somewhat. That board eventually died again. <laughs> It came back to life on its own. It's just a weird board. I think it needs a recap, first of all. But uh, about a year ago, a good family friend of mine uh, was like, you know what, I got like five, six computers. I don't need, do you want them? I'm like, yeah, sure. And he told me they were his computers throughout the 90s and early nulties. And among them was this. This is a super rare motherboard, or rather, it, it's rare, it's not common, and I found it, again. And it works just fine, so now I have two of these, and at least one of them is working just fine, and that's this one. Alright, moving on. Speaking of Keropi, here's a shit system. Uh, and it starts with a tower. Nice clicky buttons, but this is a tower a friend of mine gave me that housed uh, come on, focus. Oh, Jesus. Let's see, can it focus if I tap it? Yes, it focused. Nice. So this, oh, I like this texture. Hmm, that's nice. Uh, this tower was given to me by a friend. It housed a Celeron, I believe. Like, uh... Actually, one of the last Medochinos, I believe. Solon 700 system. Um, it's shit. It's in lame condition. I, I did what I could, but it's what's inside that's more fun. So I figured, all right, I got this shitty case. I'm gonna put a shitty system in there. You know what? I'm gonna move to handheld. So this is a board and processor that Kiropi sent me uh, a few years ago for fun. He told me, you know what, I'm gonna throw this away. Do you want it? I think it's gonna be fun. It's terrible. So this is an Intel D850GB motherboard based on the Intel 850. And if you don't know what that is, I'll give you a hint. Early Pentium 4, yes, socket 423. Um, we got a Pentium 4 1.3 in there, so the slowest of the slow Pentium 4s. I've got four sticks of RD RAM in there, and these are four 128 meg, um, uh, well, RAM bus memory, brain fart there. So for a total of half a gig, I got an HEC power supply in there which is fine, hard drive, whatever, and I figured this is a 2000 system, but I don't have a GeForce 2, and I didn't want to install GeForce 2 at max, so I installed a GeForce 4 at max 440, uh, which is roughly equivalent to the fastest uh, GeForce 2 cards that ever came out, and I got a Sandblast Live and a network card in there. So. This is a terrible system. It was woefully expensive at the time. Not fast enough, like, sorry for the shaky cam, I just gotta make it, Ugh. All right, I think it's fine now. So this was a very slow system uh, from the get-go. Like, I'd argue, unless you were doing like SSC2 stuff, which no one was doing in late 2000, early 2001, uh, it's like, I don't know, <sighs> Benium 3.866 speeds, or maybe 733, but I like to keep it around. Uh, I have no other RAM bus systems, and eventually I, I aim to get uh, a 2 gigahertz or at least a 1.9 or 1.8 uh, Pentium 4 for this socket and upgrade it a little bit. Um, see what it can do. If I could get the 2 gigahertz one, that'd be nice. Uh, unfortunately, seeing as this is an Intel board, I can't really overclock, which is kind of a shame. That would have been nice. 
Uh, that's that. This is pretty temporary. Um, this is a, a case I will be using maybe for random projects such as this. This is slow! It's just awful. Go on, let's go. Just fuck this. Alright, so one of the- from one of the worst to one of the best. This is my favorite system plus most usable, I guess, with the most uses anyway. Uh, ignore the Pentium 2 sticker on the front. Uh, you can see I've got- this is pretty new. Yeah, sorry about the the shadows. I put the light in behind the camera. So, yeah, let me use the left hand. So, drive I got pretty recently, Pioneer based. And this is a zip drive. Oh, I love this. This is ID based uh, zip drive. And uh, yeah, so let's open it up. So this is another very, very quirky little system. Uh, power supply. I should get a better power supply for this now that I see it. Some MTech MP350. I, I, I don't know. I think I researched this a little bit before I put it in. It wasn't terrible. Um, we got a QDI motherboard, we got the Advance 10T uh, chipset right down there, so it supports Tualatins. So it's a Tualatin system, right? No, it's not. This is actually running off of a VIA uh, C3 uh, Nehemia, and it's clocked originally at 1.2, but those uh, CPUs have unlocked multipliers and they are fun uh, they're just awesome I love them um, I clock this in Windows I clock it all the way up to 1466 I believe and we got a Voodoo 5 in there right here uh, because why not got a LAN card down there I got an AWE 32 here or AW32. I love this card. I just got to show you how massive it is. This is crazy stuff. And I got an X2. Uh, let's see if I can. Can I show it to you better? I think I can, yeah. This is an X2 daughter board from Serdeco. And I even got an SSD in there. Samsung SSD that I can't really remove right now. 512 megs of RAM. So this is nuts, right? What is this? What the fuck is this F2? Uh, it's uh, it's nuts, all right. It's basically my madness with um, what Phil of Phil's Computer Lab dubbed time machines in a sense. It's my, uh, I don't know, like, it, it's basically, I had this K62, uh, K63 Plus system, and it's it was great because I could just, you know, manipulate the multiplier and cache and just make it as slow as I wanted. Well, it wasn't fast enough. It was just pretty slow. It was maybe tops, like Pentium 2, 350, or 400 tops. Um, even at, you know, almost 600 megahertz, uh, I couldn't clock mine at 600. That always annoyed me. I got three of those CPUs and I could not get one of them to be stable at 600. Uh, this CPU is just as versatile, if not even more. Um, and it's also fast enough. Like, essentially, when it comes to integer, it's really fast it's almost as fast as a 12 tin let's say or just you know whatever the Pentium 3 uh, copper mine at that given clock speed but um, when it comes to 3d games its FPU is so weak uh, and the combination of stuff makes it roughly equivalent to a Pentium 3 of half the frequency so at 1466 it's about as fast as a Pentium 3 733 which for me is fast enough. I can pretty much play anything all the way up to 1999 on this, and it's pretty playable. You know, I can hit 60 FPS on pretty much most stuff, which is all I wanted. 
I love this system. I love this video card. I love this sound card. It's just great. It's great for compatibility. Most stuff just works or I can just tweak it to work. Uh, this video card in particular I got from Stoike. I, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. Um, who is some guy I met on Vogons and then on Amibe he was selling this card and I don't know if you're watching this um, hi hope you're doing fine uh, and you know just know that your video card has found a great home it, it shipped with broken caps and everything and I was like oh god no um, but I should show you just a little bit more ah, holy hell so yeah I wanted this particular Voodoo 5 because it's modded. It's got bigger coolers and fans that are more silent. I put them through a, uh, a fan controller here. And I put some Velcro so for it to stick there. And the RAM chips are cooled. That was an awesome mod that he did. Um, so yeah. I gotta say, I love this system. This is probably my favorite system in terms of, well, you know, it's cool, it's weird, but it's also very useful. All right, next up is another very cool and quirky system. All right, so for my next trick, I got this system. Uh, Zenith Data Systems. I think that should give you a good idea what kind of beast is hidden inside here. Uh, these are PCMCIA. Whoa, that just came off. Nice. Great stuff. So, yeah, I got a, I got a story about this. Can you see? I don't think you can, but now you can. So, what the hell is this? This rocks. So, Pentium... Pro. I'm a huge fan of the Pentium Pro ever since I I first read about it, uh, I don't know, maybe 15 years ago. I wanted one then and there. The wonder of having a workstation chip that was like top of the world, very expensive uh, for relatively inexpensive prices nowadays, it's the allure. Like, I don't know, it just seems so exotic and having two of them has always been my dream. Um, well, always, ever since I first read about it. And I just, what can I say about this? Uh, I got my first Pentium Pro a few years ago, maybe seven, eight. It was, sorry, it was on a 450NX motherboard. Unfortunately, I don't have that anymore. It was an Intel board. It was pretty buggy and just not optimal in performance. I think I got it locally. Um, and then I got a VS 440FX board, you know, and I could run that CPU from 200. Yeah, I had a Pentium Pro 200, by the way. Uh, from 200 to 233 megahertz, um, which allowed me to do some benchmarks, comparisons with Pentium 2 and Pentium MX. Uh, the way I see it, pretty much anyone who's into retro PC building at some point has wondered, man, I want a Pentium Pro, or man, if I could get one. Um, so I had that VS 440FX board, and I thought, I, I thought, you know, I don't need anything better, right? Come on. But eventually, I saw this system. And it housed a single, it housed another VS 440 effects. Some guy was selling it locally for, I think it was 130 euros or something. Um, I asked for more pictures and I got very blurry pictures, much like the video you're watching right now, it's pretty blurry. But, you know, I thought, what the hell is this guy doing? Like, is he trying to scam me or something? But no, it turns out it was just a kid. Uh, just some 15, 16 year old kid uh, who was in over, way over their head. Um, 
and didn't know what kind of system this was. Um, so eventually I got some more photos. It seemed to have like a Matrix Millennium, uh, this PCMCIA card over here, an Opinion Pro 200, and it ran Windows 98, uh, weirdly enough. So I asked him, you know what, shall we say 100? And he was fine with it. He showed up and yeah, he was a kid. So I was like, hey, how did you get a hold of that? And he said, oh, it was my uncle's. He was a dentist. And I opened it up, Windows 98. Sure, sure enough, it had some kind of program that interfaced with some kind of device and had a database with clients and stuff. I, I've long since deleted all this. Um, and I wanted the case off of that sale. I really did. Um, I wanted the case. The power supply is pretty nice. It's a 200 uh, watts power supply, but um, yeah, it's upside down, so you can't tell, but it's pretty nice. And I wanted the CPU, and I figured, you know what, I'm gonna sell the motherboard, the RAM, the extra RAM that I didn't need, and other stuff. Um, and so I did. But I opened up an Amibay uh, looking to buy uh, looking to buy dual Pinu Pro board uh, thread. And uh, wouldn't you know it, um, Lick Matt of Vogons came in and said, hey, I've got a couple of boards from DFI. Um, they can take two processors and they are from the, they're the last parts of the Pinion Pro Hall of 2018. And I had followed that a little bit and it was ridiculously awesome, um, which I told him. And you know, I asked him, hey, how much do you want for these boards? And he was like, cost of shipping. I lost my mind right there. Uh, I just, I completely lost my mind. So. I have two brand new, uh, previously unopened DFI motherboards with uh, like, they're, they're new old stock. They are open because I think he tested them, but they are new old stock. And so now I have this board. It's based on the 440FX uh, motherboard. I got 128 megs of RAM here. Ideally I'd want 256, but honestly 128 really fits the bill just fine here. Um, I got a couple of processors here. I ran them both at 233 megahertz. Um, power regulators, VRMs. Another Voodoo Banshee in here. Um, let's see what else we got. Uh, LAN card, this PCMCIA card that I can't get working. And I believe some, hmm, Sound Blaster PCI. 128 I think is the one on the bottom um, seeing as I am using Windows NT 4.0 sound is the least of my worries uh, I just love this this is completely useless uh, basically and now I'm on the hunt for a couple of overdrives maybe someday <laughs> yeah maybe someday that'll happen but I doubt it um, I love this this is ridiculously awesome. I want to thank Lickmat once again so much for this. This was like uh, Christmas came early this year, honestly, with this system. You know, it's the most awesome thing I have, and also probably the least useful one out of all the systems, but I love it. Um, I need to get this PCMCIA card working at some point. I don't have any PCMCIA cards, but yeah, I can't find drivers for this or anything. It's just odd. Anyway, only a couple more systems left, but they're pretty cool in their own right. So let's see. So yeah, I'm sure you could tell I have moved to a handheld uh, mode again. Um, bear with me, please. I'm just trying to get this through. It's been almost a couple of hours now. It's gotten dark. I have to use this lamp shit thing here. Um, whatever. So, this is another really neat system that I, I absolutely love. Um, it's a micro ATX Cougar case. 
Um, I'm not gonna make a cougar joke. Um, no. This will not happen on this channel. Um, and here it is. Micro ATX Pentium 4 based motherboard. This is a an ASRock P4i65G. So this is 865G based. I got a Northwood 3.2 in there. So among the fastest processors uh, for this socket. It's uh, 478, obviously. Um, I do have a Prescott a 3.2 as well. Uh, not installing that. Fuck the Prescott. I don't like it. A couple of uh, 512 uh, for a total of 1 gig uh, RAM sticks in there. Sun Blaster Oddigy, the original one. Thermal Take uh, TR2470 uh, power supply. I believe this is a 500 gig uh, hard drive. And of course, the crown jewel or the abomination, uh, depending on how you see it. This is the FX5900 Ultra with a cat custom cooler. Um, it's one of those cheap Chinese ones on eBay. So why do I like this? So despite what I said earlier, I have some love for the Pentium 4 as well. Uh, as long as it's Northwood and early, well, not very early Pentium 4, but not pretty late, 775. It's this era of the Pentium 4 that I like, where they surpassed the Athlon XP. And I think the only reason I really like it, it just reminds me of simpler times. You know, I was just a teenager having fun with these systems, or rather drooling over faster systems and owning a shitty uh, computer for the most part. I like this system because it's small uh, and it's pretty clean. I don't have a modular power supply in here. Um, focus. All right, but I managed to sort of hide all the cables and do some kind of cable management. It's nice. I like it. Another fan controller up there for the Zalman cooler. I like the Zalman cooler in here. Uh, board is not exceptional. It's early ass rock, which means, um, you know, weird hiccups. I had severe issues trying to get the RAM working at DDR400 speeds, but it allows me to have a window to 2003 and 2004. Um, why this video card though, right? Why not install 6600 GT here or something like that? Uh, it would definitely be a lot faster, but I like this particular FX card. It's pretty quirky. Uh, I like messing with it. Um, I like the fact that it can use older drivers, both on Windows XP and Windows 98, uh, which coexist on this hard drive. I don't power this often, this system, but when I do, I usually play stuff from 2003, 2004, maybe 2002, see how they perform, and just, you know, Ruminous. I think that's all there is to it. Um, be very careful with this uh, board. There is a sister board called P4i65GV. Now, you don't want that. Um, I had to find out the hard way. Uh, if you're interested in a micro ATX board, you know, uh, for your Pentium 4, don't get that. Don't get the GV, get the G. And even that, I don't know if I would recommend this particular board. Uh, so what's the issue with the GV? It uses the i865GV, which lacks an AGP slot. Um, I don't know why Intel did this, but it exists. Um, sorry, ASRock has implemented what they called AGI slot, which looks identical to AGP first glance but they basically rerouted AGP through PCI and they did some trickery I don't get it it's it's awful don't get that I was having severe performance issues I was changing video cards processors trying to find out what the hell is going on we're talking like crazy uh, bottlenecks games that should be running at like 70 80 frames per second suddenly run at like 
20, 25 random points. Uh, I'm thinking it's maybe a bandwidth issue. It's it's just a, a hack. It's very much in character, early ass rock. Yeah, not really recommended. I would not recommend it at all. Instead, get this one or perhaps another board. Um, summing it up, I don't know. I love the system. It's it's fun, instantly fun. I can just plug it in, and play some Halo or Half Life Two runs pretty decently on this. Uh, surprisingly, I like it. Okay, last but certainly not least, man, the way this lamp is illuminating, it seems like it's very dark inside the room otherwise. It's really not, but, you know, I need I need you to see this better. So, what the hell is this? AMD K63, but also Pentium? Uh, ignore that one, I was just, I don't want to peel it off, because otherwise, eh, it's just gonna go to waste. I have two of them, and there used to be a 3FX sticker here. I can't, I guess I can't be bothered to clean the goo. So yeah, this is a K63 plus based system. Let me turn it around for you. Boy, oh boy. Let's see. So this is a P5AB. I can't really show you too much. I put a cooler in there for some reason. Uh, Asus P5AB. We got a K63 plus 400 ATZ that I'm running at. Hmm. What am I running this at? Probably 550. Uh, this can't clock to 600, unfortunately. I got a hard drive up here that's something. <laughs> I think it's a 120 gig Seagate that I use 32 gigs of. Um, I got a Riva 28 here. It's a Diamond Viper V330. It's this. Um, oh, it's an Ethernet card. I've got a Voodoo 2 here. It's just a single Voodoo 2. Now on the bottom, what the hell is that? It is a sound card, but what the hell? A sound card is it? Uh, I, th I seem to think it's a Yamaha based one, but I can't recall. And that there is an S2 general MIDI module by Certico again. Um, I like this cooler here. It's uh, it's an all copper cooler from StarTech. Completely overkill, but still, I love it. So a few years ago, or up until a few years ago, I had this... Oh, I didn't talk about the RAM. It's... Oh, well, you can't even see it. It's just 128 megs of uh, SD RAM, basically. It's pretty nice overall. I like this system. In fact, I love it. I don't use it very often anymore. I don't see the reason. Um, again, this could be said of all those systems, but... Yeah, it is uh, a system I was completely fascinated fascinated with. Is it? No, that's fash. Fascist. No, I was fascinated with it. The K6. Um, the K6 is not a fascist. Fa ah, my English. I've been talking for two hours. Don't judge me. Uh, so. I love the K6 line of CPUs. Uh, from the very first moment I heard about them, I was like, wow, these all sound pretty cool. You know, maximizing your socket 7 um, board and stuff. It doesn't quite work that way all the time. Sometimes, yeah, you can just plug and play and they'll work. Uh, that's certainly not the case with the faster ones, you really need Super 7 board, at which point uh, I'd argue it was sort of so-and-so. Eh, -so. But um, once you built one, you can just use um, Gerwin, I think is his name, their name, um, Set Mule by Gerwin, 
uh, which is an amazing tool. You can just tweak multipliers. You can do that with the VIA C3 as well. Enable disable cache without going back to the BIOS. It's, it's great. It's phenomenal. Um, but performance just wasn't there for me. I needed something faster. But just as, you know, um, just as flexible. And I found that in the VIA C3. This still holds a special place in my heart. Um, it's pretty much kick-ass for anything 1997 and early-ish 1998. Even that Voodoo 2 can't really do much. And I got the Revo 128 here because it's a very nice 2D card and it provides us with some really quirky um, 3D as well. I really like that. It's unique. It's not a card I would recommend to anyone other than people that have you know, they're just tired of everything working properly, or mostly properly, and they want uh, a rough experience. Uh, weird artifacts and stuff. Yeah, this is the card for you. It, it still is pretty impressive for the time and pretty playable in a lot of games, but uh, yeah. Alright, sorry about that. Someone rang on the intercom. That was bound to happen. Someone was either gonna call or ring the bell or something. Um, so, finishing up, there's not a whole lot to say, I guess, uh, other than if you've been watching this video for its entirety, you're a hero, uh, watching a madman, like, rumble, rumble for, rumble or ramble, ramble, yeah, that's the word, ramble, because I'm rambling, even right now, as we speak, this is rambling, um, about old hardware. So, the point of this video, I said it in the start, but now it's even clearer. And it was fun because it's just fun talking about this stuff. Um, you know, I had my cup of tea here, sipping, as I'm gonna do right now. It's gotten a little bit cold. But I had my cup of tea there, talking about retro hardware. And what better way to do this than, well, not this, the best way to do it would be with other people in the room that are actually knowledgeable. Here I'm just talking to myself in the hopes that someone's actually watching. Um, but really, it's all about sharing. This is why I love communities such as Vogons, Beyond 3D, and pretty much every forum. Uh, man, what else can I say? It's all about sharing. These stuff, this stuff would not be um, the least bit interesting if it wasn't about communities sharing stuff, pointing out interesting uh, tidbits and games for you to try. Uh, technology in the service of the geek, essentially. Uh, in the nicest way possible, I'm saying this, and I'm blinding myself as I'm trying to get this back there. Um... So if you watch this, thank you. Uh, and please let me know in the comments if, uh, if any of this rang any memories or if you found any of this interesting or just why the hell did you watch it? If you're not gonna type a comment or something, I don't know. Um, <laughs> ring bell, yeah. So after another interruption, I'm back. Uh, it was just some guy with, uh, with uh, a card from the population census that's been taking place and he gave me some uh, account passwords and stuff to, to log in to. Uh, anyway, yeah, that was the, the doorbell. Um, I don't have really much of anything to add other than, again, uh, community and sharing is fun and I love this stuff. Also, this is just not all of it. This is pretty much everything I have ready built, in a sense. And some of these systems, you know, are not exactly in optimal state in terms of software. They might need a format or two. <laughs> um, whereas I have, I don't know, like dozens of motherboards stocked away. Uh, video cards. <sighs> Damn, that's... I got a lot. And some CPUs as well. 
But for the most part, this is it. This is fun. This has been fun to show them to you guys. And yeah, F2BNP signing out.